emergency. I, I just came in. There's blood everywhere. Take a deep breath. Who am I speaking with? There's blood on the floor. Sir, can you see? <laughs> you ever feel like you're living somebody else's life? I feel like I'm stuck. Manager at Fat Bottom Bistro. You're late. Again. I'm working the late shift. <laughs> Somebody has to be there while the lights are on. You can handle that, right? These kids harassing me. Why are you doing this? All right, you just calm down. They're out there and they're messing with me. I'm all alone here. Did you hear anything I just said? Yep. You're here all by yourself. No! I'm all alone here. I'm all alone. Bottom back to fat bottom bistro again soon. Boom, there you go. That was the trailer for Last Straw, arriving in select theaters, digital and video on demand on September 20th from Shout Studios. I'm Kuyi P, this is Nerds World World, and joining me to talk all things Last Straw, I have the director, Alan Scott Neal, and of course, Taylor Sardoni, our writer of this wild thriller. How are you both today? Great. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Awesome. Definitely, definitely. So uh, let's kick this off. Uh, where did this wild hair of an idea come from, Taylor? Oh, boy. You know, my uh, there was a practicality to it in the beginning. You know, how do I do something that's real low budget, one location, and it'll be easy. And then, of course, you know, when Alan came on board, he said, are you crazy with all these different time, you know, perspectives and shifts and stuff? Um, no, this was a, a love letter to those, you know, John Carpenter siege films. This was uh, we just we were we were trying to make something that was super, super fun, super tight and and kept you going from the very first frame to the very last. And I think, you know, we're, we're very proud of this film and, and I commend Alan and the whole team for really making that happen. Wonderful. Um, I felt like you've experienced this before. I have to say oh. the, the vibe of it <laughs> got me like, you know, these people I've ex I've met these people and or I've experienced this situation with just. Youngsters just not listening or paying attention and just Listen. having their way. Did any of that happen at all in real life? I am from Jersey. All right. <laughs> Originally from Jersey. I spent, spent <laughs> so it happened every week. No, um, I, I, I frequented diners just always, right? Like that was our hangout spot before we could go to bars, um, after we were going to bars. I mean, so the the characters that you meet, you know, every day, they always, always stuck out. You know, who are those people working the shift overnight? And then throwing them in, you know, in, in a ring of, of a horror pressure cooker situation, that was what was getting me interested in these characters. You kind of usually never see, of course, you know, the waitress, but what's her father doing the owner and, and trying to make ends meet and who's the cook and, you know, his brother. And so from there, absolutely. I, I have met many of these types of people. Have I ever kind of been in the situation where I was going to be murdered? No, but, <laughs> but no, we, uh, you know, we, what we set out to kind of, kind of make was absolutely inspired by way too much time spent late night diners. Awesome. Awesome. I, I have had many a late night diner visit in my wild younger days. Uh, a, um, Alan, uh, it's yes. a pleasure to chat with you, sir. Thank you. Hey. Uh, director of Last Straw. Um, I noticed when I was doing a little bit of homework, you've been in the game a little bit casting uh, yeah. on that side of the house. I had the pleasure of speaking with uh, the star of Last Straw yesterday, Jessica. Uh, yeah. Amazing casting there. Well done. Uh, great chat with her. Uh, what was it like climbing on board, working with Taylor to adapt this and bring this to, to the screen and using your casting hat, as it were, to bring on the stars that you brought onto this project? Yeah. Uh, well, first off, I was so lucky to be like, you know, a, a script that was so uh, thrilling and character driven to be dropped in my lap. And, you know, it was hard to say no to it. So, you know, we, we put a lot of work into getting this thing off the ground, you know, for the cast. 
I mean, that was one of the most important things to me. It's my, it's my livelihood. And, you know, a lot of the people that we populated this film with were people that I saved over the years from things from different projects. Like I think Jess Belkin, her, I think I first got acquainted with her work when she auditioned for the idol, uh, the, the, the Sam Levinson project, uh, you know, Joji, uh, who plays Bobby. I came to him through uh, a tape for euphoria. Um, Taylor is a, a collaborator. Taylor Kowalski is somebody I've known. You know, we've made multiple projects together and just kind of like populating the world with all of these really interesting faces. So every time, you know, you put somebody in front of the camera, it's like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's 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 really important to me. So well, that, that was great. my approach. Well, lovely. Great casting because it made me feel like when you come into a film with actors that are established. Not that these characters, actors haven't done their share of work. They have done oh, their of share course. of work. But you know, you feel, it feels more authentic, feels more real, and you don't come yeah. in with preconceived notions. And uh, hands down, great job on the casting. I, I thought they all did their piece, uh, especially our, our lead in Jessica. Um, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Jess did great. Taylor was great. Uh, uh, Chris Lopes, he was awesome. He plays PD. We're, we're, so you know, great. We're so in this film, uh, some of these characters, uh, not too likable, if you will. Um, I'm a <laughs> father, and uh, I have to tell you, this was nightmare fuel for me both. I don't know if you guys have kids. Good. Because Good. I have a teenage daughter who just started working. Uh, oh, yeah, this would never I'm happen sorry. with my child. I would take her. <laughs> and, 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 and no, no worries, Taylor. It made me like, okay, babe, uh, I'm going to pick you up when you do have to work at those later shifts. <laughs> but uh, so it's a good reminder. That's why we watch these horror thrillers, That's right? right? <laughs> um uh, I'm sorry. Where was I going on this? So yeah, great like casting ability. on this. Like ability. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm losing it it's again. It's okay. I'll, I'll, it let me let me yeah. then. I just will say that that for far too long, I've gotten the note about most of the characters I write about the likability. Uh, you know, oh, they're not too likable, and I kind of I kind of love that. It's like my favorite note to get. You know, um, and and I thought that to to kind of piggyback on what Alan was saying. I mean, Jess, everybody is so good. They inhabit their characters. Jess took a character that many would probably see as unlikable and brought so much emotion and empathy to that character that you really are with her along the course. It doesn't matter the stuff she says, you know, the nasty kind of things that she might think um, watching her through this and, and experience this thing and kind of, you know, uh, pretty much as they're throwing salt on the wounds, she's trying to heal those wounds that she has. That's that's her taking the words and elevating them. Um, so I I kind of love hearing oh you know they weren't as likable as other characters. It's like yeah those are the worlds and those characters that I like to depict. And I know Alan feels the same way. I mean we kept getting that note all the way through to production, and every time I got that I was like okay I'm gonna lean even harder into it. <laughs> it's yes, like the kind of so thing that I like. To be honest with you, somebody's having an emotional reaction, and that's yeah. not a bad. Thing. Yeah. You no. Know, Somebody's so, responding to it. Definitely. I'm so sorry. Um, that That's what made it, I don't know if you caught me earlier, but that's what to me made it a lot better and, and more, yeah. it made it stand out because, okay. And, and even uh, the, I, I don't want to give anything away, but the yeah. colleagues yeah. Uh, at the work, like I felt so impassioned for them and can understand why they made certain choices later on. And then when you go back and forth timeline wise, I'm like, okay, totally. I got it. Um, totally. Just good choices. And Alan, you can, you can, you can, take this away. I, I just wanted to say that I think that the the idea of grounding this in reality and really making it feel like it's we we had something in one of the reviews that I love so much, you know, ripped from the headlines of a of a true crime story that hasn't really happened, you know. And I think that's why audiences that have gone to the film festivals that we played at, we've had such really cool reactions. In fact, and Alan, please tell the, the story to me, we've had people faint and and vomit in our <laughs> screening and, and you know we it's a horror movie there's blood and everything but it's not not so you know inherently kind of torture porny you know bloody um but i think it's that visceral reaction that they're having is because we're grounded so much in the reality that alan and the whole team really set for us uh but right i mean alan you, you remember yeah the people that were i mean i think i think like my way into this was like how can we find a way to really ground each of these characters in a real emotional experience and then with the violence and the how do we 
make it as real as we possibly can. And sometimes things that are real might not be as bloody or might not be as, but, but what you can do is you can make people feel it. And, and it was really important for me to, to, to make sure that people felt every knife stab, they felt every death, they felt every strangle, you know, it's, it was, I didn't want it to just happen and then to move on. I really wanted to make sure that you were feeling what it felt like for those characters to be experiencing it. And I think Alan kept saying on, on set, he kept saying, you know, real violence is messy. Yes. It's not so clean, right? It's real violence is messy. And that's what we're going for with this one. (laughs) Got you. Um, Like I said, I enjoy this film. It actually, you know, like I said, made me want to, Hey, Hey Madison, that's my daughter. You know, (laughs) we got to talk a little bit. We got to be careful with things. So uh, I love that thrillers that, just make you remember, you know, be careful with certain things. We might get complacent, but remember, we got to do certain things. Um, <laughs> in that regard, again, like I said, I, uh, there's certain things I wanted a little bit more of uh, and loved how the direction of the characters went. Um, was there anything for you that maybe due to time, limit, uh, uh, schedule, budgets, uh, was there anything that we missed or you would have liked to have added that didn't like make the final cut? Or did you get get everything that you wanted? I mean, Alan, you can, I was going to say, of course, we would have, you know, if <laughs> yeah, we had a bigger budget, we would have loved to have some, you know, we budget wise had to kind of cut down on some of the, some of the elements towards the end. Um, but like, again, limitations set you free. I think um, having such a small film as this uh, and, and you leave the audience wanting a little bit more, maybe we've kind of accomplished that. But of course, uh, I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know what scene, you know what scene I thought about like two days ago? that I felt like was because we had to cut it was the scene where like after her car breaks down, there was a scene where like a guy comes to like help her out and take the car and then give her a ride. And there was a really great opportunity. I was just like, Oh my God, the casting for whoever I could have found for that guy, you know, you could have found somebody that you just never see on screen. And then just like the feeling and how like icky and nasty it was going to make you feel. Yeah. Honestly, and of course it's a red herring that there's somebody yeah. maybe out there lurking and you know who, yeah, there, there I come listen, back to that one. So many little bits and pieces that we would have loved to have, you know, made the biggest film possible, but Hey, that's, that's for the next one. All right. That's, that's, yeah. uh, that's for the next uh, one. Will we see a collaboration between the both of you again? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think, I don't think I'm getting out of here with that Alan, <laughs> with that working with Alan again. I mean, the whole team, everybody, you know, it was awesome. It was a little family. We all wanted to murder each other on set. Cause that's just the craziness of film, but no, uh, of course we're, we're working on something right now and, and yeah. trying to get it out there and, and see if we can, you know, that's very last straw adjacent. All right. Wonderful. Well, when that happens, I'd love to talk again and chat that up yeah, uh, and do all so. I can to help promote that. Oh, um, thank you. I don't want to spoil at the end, but then I'm just still, you know, again, the characters and, you know, we don't like them, but then, you, then you're then you cheering for them. And then then they throw something else wild at you. Uh, with, without spoiling, I guess, coming to the conclusion and you took us on this journey and, and supporting and not supporting in certain ways uh, some of these characters. Uh, can, can you say in so many words the resolution and what you want to leave the audience with and those that for those that also may have seen it like myself they're just kind of like hmm especially that ending scene and i don't want to spoil but no no for sure yeah i'll I'll jump it because taylor took that i want people to to leave conflicted emotionally confused question and maybe just kind of icky but at the same time but at the same time hopeful yeah. 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 We, we don't know what any stranger passing by is going through on a day to day basis. And right. I think that was one of the cool things that we were trying to do with this movie is that there's a lot of different perspectives to what happens. In, and there's a lot of different perspectives to one bloody, crazy, horrifying night. Definitely. Well, there's a lot of great moments in this. And, and uh, overall, uh, gentlemen, I'm very excited to see what you both are going to do next as my introduction to you all as filmmakers. So so bravo. Well done. Thank Throwing you. those v- virtual flowers. Thank um, you. Yeah. So many great moments. Uh, I was telling Jessica, one of my favorite moments yesterday, uh, it will in regards to the film. I love that you got her to just enjoy herself after a long day at the uh. like the middle of the film. Long day. She's still you know, just dances, you know, uh, I'm an empath. So just dancing. And then here comes the, the, the hoodlums from later, you know, to carry on the rest of the film, but that, that just that break in emotion. And then you, you switch to that uh, as it rises, just Bravo. Um, Thank you again for your time guys. Thank Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Yeah. Definitely. Everybody, uh, Alan Scott Neal, Taylor Sardoni's Last Straw arrives in Select Theaters Digital and Video on Demand on September 20th from Shout Studios. I'm Kui P. This is Nerds Rule the World.